And number 81, 81, oh, for a thousand tongues.
wonderful choir this morning. Thank you. Let's turn to number 400 in the hymnal. We'll be singing this uh, during the worship service, but I wanted to give us a chance to get the Spanish words into our mouths. So I'd like you to repeat after me that we're on number 400 in the hymnal. I'll speak a phrase and then ask you to repeat it. Santo, 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 santo es nuestro Dios. Santo, 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 santo es nuestro Dios. De toda la tierra. So, Señor, Señor de toda la tierra, Santo, Santo es nuestro Dios. Señor de toda la tierra, Santo, Santo es nuestro Dios. Now repeating back up to the top again. Santo, 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 Santo es nuestro Dios. Santo, 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 Santo es nuestro Dios. Señor de toda la historia, Santo, Santo es nuestro Dios. Santo de toda la historia, Santo, Santo es nuestro Dios. Que acompa nuestro pueblo, que acompa nuestro pueblo, que vive en nuestras luchas, que vive en nuestras luchas. Del universo entero, del universo entero, el único Señor, el único Señor. Benditos los que en su nombre, benditos los que en su nombre, el Evangelio anuncian, el Evangelio anuncian. La buena y gran noticia, y la buena y gran noticia de la liberación, de la liberación. Qué bueno. Okay. Um, let's turn our attention now to um, our, yeah, it's 9.30, our prelude.
Buenos dias y bienvenidos a todos. Good morning and welcome to everyone to worship here at College Mennonite Church, and a special welcome to anyone who might be joining us for the first time, either here in this space or electronically. We gather to be refreshed and renewed in our journey of faith. We come because we want to see Jesus. In the Gospel of John, chapter 15, Jesus tells us, I am the vine, you are the branches. Stay joined to me, and I will stay joined to you. Apart from me, you will be like a dry, dead branch. Let my teachings become part of you, and then you will bear fruit. Please turn in, the, in your worship folder to the call to worship and read with me the responsive reading. We who gather this morning are intricately connected with all peoples of the world through our Creator. Estamos conectados a otros a través de Dios del Creador. We come to worship our Creator. Venimos a adorar a nuestro Creador. Con la tierra, along with the earth, we cry out for the saving power of Jesus Christ. Clamamos a Jesucristo a que nos salve. We come to see Jesus Christ. Venimos a ver a Jesucristo. We want to be animated by the Holy Spirit, animados por el Espíritu Santo, to seek justice for the earth and all its people. Buscamos la justicia para la tierra y para todas las personas. We come to breathe in the Holy Spirit. Venimos a respirar el Espíritu Santo. And now in your blue hymnal of worship book, please turn to number 44 and stand. We will be accompanied by Jeffrey Weaver on the organ. He is married to Anne Marie, our new music minister.
remain standing. Let's turn to number 400 in the hymnal. <clears throat> the first time through, we'll sing the Spanish, and on the repeat, sing that second line that's printed there, the same down at the bottom. On the repeat, sing the second line. And then we go back to the top and we'll sing the English all the way through, doing the same second line on the repeats. And then we'll go back and finish the top part in Spanish one last time, just the top part. Now is the time to bring our prayers of praise and petition to God. I invite you to hold out your hands as we pray together. Please pray with me. Loving and gentle God, thank you for this beautiful summer day, for blue sky, for shady trees and fruitful gardens. Thank you for music tunes and words that express our faith and bear witness to the truth. You accompany us and live within our struggles. You liberate us from bondage. Thank you for your great patience with us as we learn to walk in your ways. Today we remember those among us who are struggling with health issues. Be present with Arlen Claussen this week during his heart surgery in Elkhart with Eber Rice Smucker during his kidney surgery in Indianapolis, and with Sylvia Jackson during her leg surgery in Columbus, Ohio. Others among us face physical and emotional challenges of many kinds. Bring your courage, your patience, your healing God. Today we also remember that the systems of air, water, and soil you created on our planet Earth are fragile. Floods in the South are evidence of that. Bring your salvation to those people suffering from the floods. And forgive us for taking these precious gifts for granted. Open our eyes to their beauty and value for all your creatures now and in years to come. And now we bring before you refugees and immigrants all over the world 
who live in fear and suffering. We know that deportation threats are real for individuals and families right here in our own community. Our hearts go out to sisters and brothers near and far who are affected. We cry out to you, bring your deliverance, bring your justice, bring your hope. We pray all of these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. And now turn in the purple, sing the storybook to number 47. And while we are singing this hymn, children, you are invited to come down to the circle for the children's time. Good morning, children. It's good to see you this morning. I want to invite you to pick out a container. So go ahead and come up here and pick a container and then take it back with you to where you're sitting. Not these over here, but these over here. Do you want this Supergirl one? Okay. Does everybody have a container? Can, can you um, take a guess of what we're talking about this morning? Water bottles. Water bottles. Close. Um, giving water to people in need. Yeah, giving water to people in need. Yes, we're getting really, really close. Well, yes, we're going to talk about water and especially how we get water that we need to drink and wash and water gardens and crops and also how we carry it okay so that's why you have some containers i want to remind you that water is a part of god's creation that we need every single day don't we we need to drink and we need it to help make things grow right plants need water and sunlight and um yeah, so we need it to drink and to live. And water is also one of part of God's creation that can suffer when we do things like pollute it or we overuse land. Um, and then there are just things that happen in naturally in creation or that we we kind of affect by what we do as human beings um, things like drought do you know what drought is, is it, what can you tell me what that is land with no water so it maybe doesn't rain um, very much or or not at all um, and then there's also times of flooding. Um, we heard Becky mention in the prayer today about flooding. 
And even though that might seem like having lots of extra water from a flood would be like, oh, well, we've got more water. Often the water gets um, contaminated with all kinds of things um, when there's a flood. So it's not necessarily water that we can drink or use to, to wash or cook with. Well, I want you to think about what if you didn't have a faucet in your house? Most of you have a place in your bathroom or kitchen where you turn the water on, right? And the water just comes out, right? What if you didn't have that in your house? Or, I mean, you, uh, we probably all at least have one faucet. What if we didn't have any faucets in our house? The water from the river, maybe. Um, what if it was maybe at the way back, the farthest part in your yard? Um, do you think your water container that you picked out would be enough for you to drink and your whole family to drink and to cook with and to bathe with and to water your garden with? You don't think so? Okay, would you, uh, let's say you had a faucet in your yard, but way far away, how many trips would you have to make to, to get enough water for that house? 10, maybe, Ryan? 11, 12, yeah, or maybe 30 or 40 or 50? 70, okay, yeah. 90. And you know what, Elijah, if you did, can you hold up your container? Can you hold up your container? His container's like this. Do you think that he would be able to get much water if he doesn't quite have the right kind of container for carrying water, does he? The, the water would just come right out. Okay, so we're going to just think a little bit about um, carrying water and what that would be like if we had to go back and forth. What if we had to go all the way from here to downtown Goshen to get our water? Maybe, yeah, because you live downtown, but if you're going from church here, there, what if, what if you had to do that every day? Every day to get enough water for your family. Well, that's what we're, um, we're thinking about other people that have to do that to get their water because they don't maybe have a faucet in their house or even a well close to their home. There's water in there, yeah. So we are thinking about um, helping. Well, we are planning to help with Mennonite Central Committee's water projects in Mozambique and Ethiopia. Mozambique is a country in Africa where they have uh, trouble finding water, at, sometimes because it only rains about three months out of the year, or uh, other reasons are that um, it gets contaminated or it's too far away from where people live. Um, I was reading a bit about this, and there was one community leader that they said that they would go to the river, like one of you, Alice, you said that if you didn't have a faucet, you might go to the river, right, to get water? Well, they were going to the river, and at their river, they got attacked by crocodiles. They did. Yeah, and about 16 people of their community were killed by crocodiles. So that's not a very good option for getting water, is it? Like if it's if you're threatened by big animals like that, if they if you move fast, but if you move fast, you might spill your water, right? Or okay, but then that it might be scary and hard, right? Yeah, so. Mennonite Central Committee is working with many organizations um, and one special organization in Mozambique to make it easier for people to get water and so that they don't have to walk miles and miles to get water every day. Um, what? Could they ca carry the crocodiles? 
kill the crocodiles. I don't know, that's probably not very easy to do. Yeah, I think that, that they're trying to leave that part of God's creation alone and finding water somewhere else. Yeah. So, so what we are going to do is we are going to collect some money, especially next Sunday, and we're going to give that to Mennonite Central Committee to help with their work with water in Mozambique. But one thing I want to have you um, try out a little bit before we talk a little bit more about that is do you see... Um, can someone come get this container of water here? And this one, okay, and you can get that one, Cora. And, oh, this might be um, a little bit better water container than what Elijah has, right? Like to carry water. If you did have to make many trips, do you wanna get this, Matthew? Because I'm gonna have you guys experiment a little bit. Okay. All right. Jamie, do you want to come get this one? Okay. So I want those of you who have water containers. Now, yours is empty, Sophia, but I just want you to imagine putting that on your shoulder, okay? And the rest of you that have the big water containers, put that up on your shoulder. Don't hurt yourself. Go ahead and stand up. All right. And each of you choose an aisle and walk down the aisle with your water. Is that, is that easy to do? Just keep going. Just, don't, just come back, Matthew, when you get to the door, okay? All right? Can you imagine having to do that for hours and hours a day, but with even more, right? That's what a lot of children and women do. So we're trying to help families so that they can just go to a community well that's closer to their homes and um, not have to spend so much of their time gathering water to drink and to wash and water their gardens, okay? So I want you to try to remember next week oh, to bring a cup like this, a big cup like this full of coins. No, you don't have to pick a big, big one like this, but you can pick, pick a cup at home, maybe one of your favorite cups or mugs, and try to fill it up with change, or when you, when you come, um, you can ask other people around to give change. And I want to invite the rest of the congregation to bring a cup of change next uh, Sunday and we're gonna take a special offering for water projects for Mennonite Central Committee, okay? All right, let's pray together and then I'm gonna have you help me put all these water containers in some baskets that I brought. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for water. We know that it is a gift of your creation that we need every day to stay alive and to help to things to grow. Help us to help others to have clean water to drink and to cook with and to wash with. And God, again, we are grateful for the clean water that we have access to. Help us to bless others in the same way. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I'm going to bring some baskets up here, and I want you to put your water containers in those, and then you can get your worship bags and go back to your seats, okay? All right. Okay. While the children are cleaning up, I invite you to find the insert in your bulletin, Touch the Earth Lightly and we'll sing that together.
Our preacher this morning is David Maldonado, a member of our pastoral team. Please pray with me, David. God, thank you for David, for his study and reflection, for his gentle and teachable spirit, for his prophetic words that you have given him. Open our ears and our spirits and our hearts to hear him. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Good morning. I have a gadget this morning I'm going to use. There it is. This morning I want to share three slides. It's been in the news, but since we're talking about creation care, I just want to look at them again, talk a little bit about that. Then I'm going to look at two verses, and then I want to close with a poem by Joy Harper. As we read here, the definition I'm using is it's for ecology. So the word is resilience. In ecology, resilience is the capacity of an ecosystem to respond to a disturbance by resisting damage and recovering quickly. My first slide, as you can see, there's a movie been, uh, came out with, uh, about this, The Deepwater Horizon. You may remember this, it was in the Gulf. It was April 20 when it exploded. Uh, it's sinking the Deepwater Horizon oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico that killed 11 people. Underwater cameras revealed the BP pipe was leaking oil and gas on the ocean floor about 42 miles off the coast of Louisiana. By the time the well was capped on July 15, which was 87 days later, an estimated 3.19 million barrels of oil had leaked into the Gulf. I remember this story, and I remember um, sometimes this 24-hour cycle of news gets you anxious. And they would show it and all that oil coming out and I'd be thinking, how are these people going to cap that? And I know they had engineers working 24 hours a day trying to figure this out. So 87 days later, they were able to cap it, thank God. In 2017, which would be seven years after this event, my wife Maddie and I, we were sitting at a restaurant called The Blind Tiger. This is in Bay St. Louis in the Gulf of Mississippi, and we were enjoying seafood. Seven years later, and before that, already seafood had been being sold. It was back on the market. Shrimp were about this big. I mean, it was massive amount of seafood. I was impressed that in my mind, in a seven year span, everything's back to normal, if you will. The blind tiger, their fishermen go out at night, whatever they catch, they bring in the morning. And that's uh, the menu or the fish is put up on the chalkboard and they have it in coolers. And once it sells out, it's done for the day. So if you want good seafood, if you enjoy seafood, and if you're in the Mississippi Gulf, you may want to consider the blind tiger. <laughs> the next one is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. This is awful. It's known as the GPGP, is the largest of the five offshore plastic accumulation zones in the world's oceans. It is located halfway between Hawaii and California. It is estimated that 1.15 to 2.41 million tons of plastic are entering the ocean each year from rivers. More than half of this plastic is less dense than the water, meaning that it, it doesn't sink, it just sits up top. 
In 1998, I was on a 30-day, for lack of a better word, tour, speaking engagement in Guatemala. I was in a place called um, Escuintla. I hear folks saying it's hot and humid here. Escuintla is hot and humid. <laughs> you take a shower, and as you're drying off inside, the bathroom, AC running, you're sweating. And so that was hot and humid. It felt like an Amazon. But as I was walking and as I traveled the country, I saw just trash everywhere. Trash in the canals. And every time I had the opportunity to speak, I would make reference to that. And I would tell God's people, we need to do a better job about this. It was disturbing to me, the amount of trash everywhere. The next one is deforestation. I don't think you can see the monkeys, but they're having their own conversation there. Deforestation is the permanent destruction of forests in order to make land available for other uses. An estimated 18 million acres of forest, which is roughly the size of the country of Panama, are lost each year. According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. So these are just three things that have been in the news. Some of them keep cycling over because of we as humans are doing a bad job of taking care of what the Ecuadorians call Pachamama. Pachamama is Mother Earth. I learned this. I know some folks thought Maddie and I was in Argentina on mission work. No, we were in Ecuador on vacation. And I was zip lining and just having a whole lot of fun. But I learned that in Ecuador, it's called Pachamama. We call it Mother Earth. About four, maybe three years ago, I was having a conversation with my oldest son, Christopher. He's 34 years old. And we were talking about the oil spill and several things. He's, he's into farming. He likes uh, organic farming. I know Daniel has got some worms somewhere that he started. My son has a, has a lot of worms. <laughs> he, he has some land out there in Mississippi, and he has a lot of worms, a lot of them little worms. So he talks about fertilizer and all this stuff. But he's the one who brought my attention to the resilience of the earth. And ever since he, we had that conversation about three years ago, it just stayed in my mind. It just, I kept thinking about it. So this morning I have the opportunity, since we're talking about creation care, to share a little bit about those three years I've been thinking about. So I'll only be about 55 minutes, okay? <laughs> Somebody's blood pressure just went... Pshht. So I started to think about this. Everything developed by humans is sourced from the earth. I often ask a question, does the earth weigh more today or when it was originally created? Some folks really think about that and then they stare at me and say, I don't know. Well, in my minute mind, I think it weighs the same because we've taken everything that's on earth these large buildings were in the ground. These pews were part of trees. So in other words, nobody brought anything from another land when they were born. You did not bring a garage full of stuff when you were born. Everything is sourced from earth. The earth has a powerful ability to influence each and every one of us. 
It inspires us. It provides for us and it sustains us. Earth has this repetition cycle of provision. This quiet, repetitious cycle is happening right now. Farmers know more about this than I would ever know. And then the other thing I'm looking at is consider the healing power of the earth. Madeline's madrina, some of you might have met her. She, she visited last year. She's 92, I believe, now. 90? And she used a lot of herbs for healing. So she, she had a lot of herbs, a lot of plants. She knew about different plants. And she used those for healing purposes. So the earth provides us with the, uh, certain plants and stuff to help us. So I think about that. Now, thinking about all this, I was thinking about artists. I was reading about artists and designers, the philosophy of artists and designers. There's actually a class about that. I didn't know that. But people want to be artists. They go take this class, and it's philosophy. So part of this teaching is that the artist or the designer would like to express an event. Uh, it's a form of expression, whatever they come up with is a form of expression about something, about an idea, about an event, or about themselves, or the way they see the world. It's expressed in that rendering. So, I put all this together, and here's what I come up with. I believe the reason why creation is so resilient is because the creator embedded his qualities in his creation. The reason why the earth has this ability to heal itself is because the creator made that possible for the creation itself to heal itself because the creation is here to serve you and me. That's the original intent of the earth, is to serve us. It's not for us to serve the earth, but it's contrary. Now, obviously, after the fall, something happened that now we have become slaves to creation. But originally, things just grew, and it grew for humans and it grew without the amount of effort that we have to invest in it so i want to look at this psalm psalm 33 verse 5 the lord loves righteousness and justice the latter part the last part the earth is full of his unfailing love so the earth responds to our needs because God is expressing his love towards each and every one of us and his entire creation. So as we look at the different um, seasons of our, of, that we live in and, and the different um, harvests, that's God expressing love to us and changing the menu, if you will. Are you with me? I can go eat at McDonald's if I want. We can. Any of us can. Is it nutritious? Is it healthiest? That's debatable. Or I can wait for Madeline to cook up some of her magic. And when she cooks, she does brown rice because I... I, I'm part of a special club known as diabetics. So I have to watch what I eat. So when she prepares food, she prepares food knowing that I need to be careful. When I go to McDonald's, they're not considering that. 
My point, God is considerate of each and every one of our needs, and he's embedded that in his creation, and we see that through the seasons. The other thing is Psalm 145, verse 9. The Lord is good to all. If you want to talk about a person who's not biased, who doesn't have preferences, who doesn't discriminate, reality is there's only one, God and God alone. He stands apart from each and every one of us. I believe each and every one of us, some harder than others, work at this, not being biased, not being preferential, not being racist is the word being thrown around a lot. We all work at it, all of us. But the one who is completely unbiased is God, and he gives rain to the just and the unjust. He feeds us all. He provides for all of us. Someone approached me one time and said, if your God is so good, why are people starving in such and such land? And I responded, really? Is it his fault that these billionaires are spending $5,000 on a poodle day spa? Why don't you go address the billionaire over there? We have power to change situations on earth. Humans just choose not to. It's a matter of choice. It's not God's fault. Why don't you go to Washington and ask them why they spend thousands of dollars shredding papers or why do we have a warehouse full of old stuff that previous presidents, every president decorates the Oval Office and then when he or she goes out, well, we haven't had a she yet, maybe soon, they redecorate it, and all that furniture and all that stuff goes to a warehouse, and we've been paying millions of dollars on that. Why don't we just get rid of all that stuff, burn it, and take that money and help somebody? Now, I kind of went somewhere else, right? I'm coming back. <laughs> he has compassion on all he has made. So I see that the earth's attributes are a reflection of God's love and compassion. I see that God embedded himself in his creation because he is the original first artist and designer. That is he. His unseen qualities and powers are made known to us, stated in Romans. And I want to finish with this poem. This is by Jo Harjo. It is entitled, Remember. She is a poet a musician, and author. She is the first Native American United States Poet Laureate. So I found this on, this on the web, and you probably can't read that. Maybe you can, but I'll read it. Remember the sky that you were born under. Know each of the stars' stories. Remember the moon. Know who she is. Remember the sun's birth at dawn. That is the strongest point of time. Remember sundown and the giving away tonight. Remember your birth, how your mother struggled to give you form and breath. You are evidence of her life and her mother's and hers. Remember your father. He is your life also. Remember the earth whose skin you are, red earth, Black earth, yellow earth, white earth, brown earth, we are earth. Remember the plants, trees, the animal life, who all have their tribes, their families, their histories too. Talk to them, listen to them. They are live poems. Remember the wind, remember her voice. She knows the origin of this universe. Remember. You are all people, and all people are you. Remember, you are this universe, and this universe is you. Remember, all is in motion, is growing, is you. Remember, language comes from this. Remember the dance, language is, that life is, remember. So as stewards, we need to remember that 
God not only gave us the gift of Jesus, he gave us this gift called the earth. So let's keep that in mind. Blessings. Let us respond with singing in the purple, sing the story books number 33. Let justice roll like a river. This uh, song may be a bit new to some of us and the verses are a little complicated because each one has different music. So, I'm going to sing out strongly on the verses and you can choose to listen or, and follow along. If you'd like to sing with me, I welcome that as well. And we will only be doing verses one, two, and five. And notice that um, verses two and five continue on the next page. Number 33. You know, I think, I think we should stand up. Get the blood flow.
Good morning. We're Sophie and David Lapjos, for those of you who don't know, and we're very happy to be worshiping with you all again this Sunday. We're here up, up here this morning for two reasons. First of all, we want to remind you that you are all welcome to join us for a reception um, after the service. We'll have some Middle Eastern foods um, right across the hallway here in the gathering rooms. And then we will transition back here into the sanctuary where David and I will share a little bit more about um, our work and life in Nazareth this past year where we served with Mennonite Mission Network. Second, we're here to tell you more about our next overseas assignment with MMN, um, Mennonite Mission Network. As those who were here last week heard, we will be starting a new assignment in Germany this September. We will be living in the village of Baumenthal in the southwest, near Heidelberg, south of Frankfurt. In Baumenthal, Sophie will work part-time in a pastoral role at the local Mennonite congregation. I will work part-time for the German Mennonite Peace Committee, a counterpart to Christian peacemaker teams. This organization has a long history of collaboration with U.S. Mennonites, including the military counseling program, um, promoting conscientious objection with soldiers, and a collaborative project monitoring human rights abuses in Greece. I hope to speak in churches, help organize German Mennonite communities to engage in refugee-related work, and perhaps arrange learning trips to the, Middle, to the Middle East, and certainly always to promote environmental education and help organize solar installations everywhere I possibly can. Um, I hope we find as many wonderful partners there as we have here. In addition, sorry, in addition to our work placements, we will both be enrolled in intensive language study courses, which focus on quickly integrating non-native German speakers into the society and workforce. I already speak some basic German, and we're both studying intensively this summer in preparation. We'll be living in a Mennonite intentional community in which living spaces, food, and daily meals are shared. Thank you again for the ways that you have been supportive of us and our work overseas this past year. We've always so appreciated receiving your personal responses to our prayer letters. We're grateful for your prayers as well, and it's meant so much to, to us to know that you are thinking of us, of David's father, and of the people around us in Israel-Palestine. We look forward to continuing to share with you about our work and experiences in Germany and hearing back about what's going on here in Goshen and at CMC. I'm especially grateful for all of your support in the last number of years as I explored pastoral work in this congregation, experiences which have helped prepare me for this next step in a new congregation and community. While our summer schedule is quite full, we will be in town here in Goshen again in August and hope to see more of you at that time before leaving the country for Germany in September. Vielen Dank und Gott segne euch alle. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Sophie and David. Now it's the time to bring our offerings forward to the baskets, or someone will, will collect your offering for you if you prefer. And during the offering, please pass the black friendship pads that are at the end of the rows and sign your name and return them.
in prayer to give thanks to the Lord for his provisions. Father, thank you for your abundant love, your mercy, and your compassions. Thank you for your abundant provisions on this house and on your creation. We thank you that we're able to give back something of the many blessings you give us. In Christ's name we thank you. Amen. In the Sing the Journey songbooks number 76, the Lord bless you and keep you. As you go out from here, remember that we are all connected to God's beautiful and resilient creation. And we are all connected to Jesus, the branch of the vine. Greet those around you, extend the hand of peace and welcome. Go in peace.